Um, hi, welcome to the Institute for Democracy in Higher Education, MAP for Political Learning. Uh, this scenario is actually designed for um, institutions that are in the NSELV study and might want to take uh, political learning on their campus uh, to a deeper level. You might be a um, person interested in supporting faculty and students who are trying to bring this information into classrooms. You might be a student group trying to understand how to get more students engaged or involved in thinking about democratic processes on campus. Um, you might be a local organization um, looking to partner with a community campus that you know is in the NSELF study. Uh, but this is really trying to think about how you might place your campus or your institution within its own geographic political context and think about some of the um, barriers and um, facilitative things that might be happening in your area that could promote political learning specifically related to electoral engagement at this point, um, but other ways in which you might think about context mattering. So if you haven't looked at the basic uh, scenario, uh, basic videos looking at tu the tutorials on how to use this map, I encourage you to do so before further using this scenario. But we're going to start and pretend that you're one of the campuses in the study. So the first thing I would do is, this is the basic default view. There are three active layers um, here on the sidebar. I would turn some of the layers off. So I would go to the content area. I would turn off this 18 to 29 year olds in college and I would also turn off this general institutions of higher education so we can see both the campuses in and outside of the study. Um, let us uh, assume that you are a college uh, that is in, in the study in Ohio. Um, in the whole Ohio area. Hold on a second as we zoom in. I am looking for Lima. Okay, here we are. Let, let us say that you're this campus right here, Ohio Northern University, which is a, a, a bachelor's level Carnegie classified organization or institution. It's private, not for profit. Um, with between 1,000 and 499,000 students. It's mostly undergraduate, so this is a certain kind of campus. So first, this is the kind of campus context. So we're dealing with mostly undergraduates um, who are in a four-year uh, degree program. And I'm assuming if you're Ohio Northern University, you know your campus profile. Um, and that, you know, as a highly residential um, institution, you have a certain kind of student population that is bound by your campus. A different campus might have a different residential uh, profile, different student population, but this this is your campus that you know your, what your students are about. You have an understanding of who they are. So let's see what the context around your campus looks like um, as it relates to sort of electoral engagement, particularly, and sort of learning how electoral processes might impact um, political participation by young people if you were trying to um, work with students on campus to help them understand how political engagement, at least within the electoral context, might work. Um, there are other sorts of political engagement you could talk to them about, but let's for, for now um, deal with this. Because we're at the campus level, I would suggest that you mostly deal with layers that are dealing with the congressional district level, which will give you fine, much more fine detail about your campus context. So let's look at what percentage of 18 to 29 year olds are currently um, enrolled in, um, in, in colleges in your congressional district. So we'll kind of come up here because um, Ohio Northern University is in this congressional district that has some other colleges and universities and kind of moves around from Findlay almost up to Toledo and kind of around. Um, it has what looks to be a, be a slightly lower, as a congressional district, lower um, college enrollments of 18 to 29 year olds than say some the surrounding districts, um, right? So this district, is actually um, is the Ohio 5th district, so it's slightly lower. I just clicked on the district here and it gave us what is 1.8% of 18 to 29 year olds in this district are enrolled in college. Um, as opposed to the district next door, which has 2.6% of uh, the Ohio 4th, which has 2.6%. So this congressional district, that um, Ohio Northern University is located in is slightly different. However, because it is very close to the Ohio 4th, there might be some um, kind of seepage or overlap between the two districts. So it might be somewhere uh, in between.
So at least we have a sense of how many um, college 18 to 29 year olds are uh, enrolled in college, um, probably somewhere between um, 1.8 and 2.6 percent of 18 to 29 year olds. That means that there's probably some subset, a good chunk of 18 to 29 year olds who reside outside of your college campus and are not enrolled on your campus. And whether or not you want to include them as part of um, your learning or understanding about 18, 20, 18 to 29 year olds, that is the context, that not every 18 to 29 year old that is well, that we're talking about is on your college campus or on any college campus in the district. So that's one way in which we can look at this layer. So let's say we're not looking at college enrollments. We want to look at what um, percentage of the overall um, population in the district of uh, our 18 to 29 year olds. So it looks like both for the Ohio 5th and the Ohio 4th um, that we have what appear to be around um, 13 to 20 percent of 18 to 29 of the population are 18 to 29 year olds. So let's see what it is for the Ohio fifth. It's about 21 percent almost, 20.82 point, 20 percent, and for the Ohio fourth it's 19 point. So around 20 percent of 18 to 20 of the population um, in these two congressional districts that surround Ohio Northern University are 18 to 29 year olds. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good amount. It's not the it's not the median, but it's like about 20 percent of the population of is 18 to 29 year olds. And of those 18 to 29 year olds, about 2 percent are enrolled in college campuses in their districts. OK, so now you get a little sense of what the young voting population or potential voting population is um, in this area. We can also look at how um, so that tells you what the potential um, level of engagement is possible within the within the uh, community. Let's look at how competitive the, the congressional district is where Ohio Northern University is. And the reason we look at competitiveness is because the more competitive a uh, place is, the more likelihood that young people will be inclined to be engaged in electoral processes. And that's a dynamic that we see over and over again. So this is something you could talk to students about, about how competitiveness and the amount of information that is out there about campaigns um, really is one way in which um, help, helps uh, young people people and young voters or potential young voters get engaged and so that's a factor in youth turnout and so if you're talking about things that influence youth turnout competitiveness is one of them so it looks like at the congressional district both for the fourth and the fifth districts in Ohio it's not a very competitive election at this time if we come to the or we don't have any data to that effect in which case there's probably no competitiveness because we don't have much data or we don't know um, but we can also see, is it competitive at the state level for the presidential election in 2016? And um, at least by last, uh, last estimation, which was in July of 2016, we see that Ohio as a state is highly competitive, which we know. Ohio has traditionally, for our last few, quite a number of election cycles, been a very highly competitive swing state. So that means there's a lot of campaign activity happening in Ohio. It means that um, young people, the 18 to 29 year old voting population, is surrounded by a lot of voting activity and voting information. So they are likely to be really interested and potentially engaged in campaigns or issues because the state is highly competitive competitive and there's a lot of information flowing. Um, we can also, this is for the presidential campaign, we can see how uh, competitive it is for the Senate elections that are coming up this year too. So we can see that Ohio is also fairly competitive um, at, for the Senate races as well that are happening in the state. Not as competitive as for the presidential election, but it is also pretty competitive. Um, we draw our competitive information from um, three different political analytic uh, sources. Um, uh, and we make an average of them. And again, this is as of July 2016. So as we get closer to the election, the predictions change. So the situation may be different. So if you were on a college campus, this could be a starting point for conversation and you could start to uh, engage students in conversations about researching and looking to see um, how competitive might the, um, the districts or the state be right now at this particular time, at least if you're in an election cycle. Or you could do like a historical look of like, how competitive was it in the 2012 election? Can we find information about that? Um, 
The other thing that influences young people in voting is how facilitative the election laws are. Are there barriers in place and do are there laws that help young people um, turn out their vote? And we can see that Ohio actually does not have very facilitative laws. They don't have things, um, things like online voter registration, early voting, um, same day registration, some of those sorts of things. So that while there's a lot of campaign activity, it could also mean that there's there's also um, actual um, electoral law policies in place that don't facilitate young people voting. Um, so that's another thing to look at and research to see how the laws change, what do they look like in other states. Um, that's another kind of layer to look at. Um, in addition to sort of looking at turnout, oh, we can also see what the turnout was uh, uh, in 2014 at the congressional district. So fairly okay turnout of 18 to 20 uh, nine-year-olds in 2014 in both congressional districts. So we look like we're at somewhere between 8 and 12 percent. Not bad, not the best turnout, but it's also not bad. Uh, we could also see what it looked like at the state level um, in 2012, the last presidential election, and that was a little better, kind of more close to the top. If we click on the state, we'll um, see that uh, uh, well, this is the facilitative law. Let's go to the next thing. That was about 50% turnout. So that's pretty good. That's higher higher than average in the 2012 uh, election. Um, so that's another bit of information you can look at. Um, we've also provided some basic demographic layers here to give a little more context uh, to, to the situation here. I want to make sure I turn off um, all other layers. Okay. Um, we can look at some diversity indicators that surround... Um, Ohio Northern, so not the most, the darker the bits, the more diverse the area, so it's a more homogeneous area, um, which can help if you're trying to understand um, uh, what the what the surrounding population might be and some of the challenges uh, students might experience. Uh, we could also look at the median age. Um, we can see here. As I click in this little triangle area, it's probably a higher concentration. Uh, here's the age distribution, so a little more towards the young age uh, in this little triangle here. You know, median age is 25, so that means um, uh, that it's probably also heavily influenced by Ohio Northern being in this area. Uh, we can also look at the median household income to see poverty. Uh, levels. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep zooming in and out that I don't mean to do that. Uh, so this area here, um, it's loading the poverty information. We can click here. Um, so it looks like the median income is about $51,000, which is um, almost average, almost at the average for the U.S. So it's not a, it's right at the middle, middle part, it's very median. Um, so that gives you some context. So it's a mostly homo homogeneous, um, fairly median income area with some fairly young population. So that can start to give some demographic context to the to the to the college. So I think these are some beginning ways to start to talk about both the um, soci like the socioeconomic demographic factors, but also some of the political factors that factor into youth political engagement. And you can either look at them in the context of a current election for 2016. You can come retrospectively and look at them if you're um, after the 2016 election. You can start to use this as a basis to talk about past elections um, and ways in which past elections have operated for young people. Um, in addition to the Institute for Democracy and Higher Education, um, our system Mr. Um, research entity at Tisch College at Tufts University Circle provides a lot of youth voting information that's historical. Um, so this is mostly a way to start getting a conversation about some of the factors that contribute to um, young people, young people voting, barriers young people might be experiencing or not, um, and sort of some of the influencing factors that relate to political participation related to elections, and helping students understand some of these factors and how they relate to um, uh, electoral engagement as one type of political uh, learning and political engagement strategy and help them move kind of next into the next levels. Um, we are very interested in learning from you other ways you might want to start thinking or using this map but this is just a beginning way to think about some of the information and how you might use it on your campus. So thank you.